Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be talking all about fertilizer. The different types of fertilizer, I know it's really confusing a lot of the times on what to use, how much to use, how often. Today's video is going to show you and break it down real simple for you on the different types of fertilizers that we have, what you want to use in your garden, and how often. You're in the garden with Patrick. All right, so let's talk about fertilizer in general. There are so many different types of fertilizers out there, especially when you just go to your big box stores and you just look on the shelves. There is a ton of different uh, types of fertilizers. There's uh, soluble, there's insoluble, there's granular, there's all kinds of different uh, numbers on the boxes. And what does all that mean? So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna break that down for you really simple today and how you are going to be using that in your garden back here. Uh, and it'll be pretty much across the board. I'll give you some basic ideas of how you're going to fertilize for different plants and when you're gonna fertilize. So uh, the first most important thing that we wanna talk about before we even get to the fertilizing part is your soil. The soil is the key and if you don't have good soil, and that's going to make a big huge difference in how your garden grows so i would always recommend to do a soil test if you're a new beginning gardener um, or maybe you have an established garden and you're not sure what's going on i'm going to put a link below i have an affiliate link to a soil test kit uh, that i use and it breaks down everything and i'll put a description in the uh, box below uh, on a video that i did on that particular soil test kit uh, in addition to having your soil tested, it would be um, very advantageous for you to have your soil uh, in the soil test. It'll have your pH tested also. pH is important because certain plants will thrive or not thrive in the different uh, pHs. So you can have all the fertilizer in the world, uh, but if your plants are not able to absorb those nutrients, whether that's in the ground in your soil that you have or something that you're putting uh, around or on top of your soil through granular or um, a water soluble uh, fertilizer then what will happen is is you're going to end up having to um, have a, a plant that's not going to survive because the ph is too high or ph is too low so get your soil tested that's really important the ph for most plants is going to be around a neutral which is 7.0 if it's a little higher a little lower that will uh, be okay um, but get your soil tested so if we think about our nutrients that we're putting into our bodies this is how we can break it down make it really simple for you to understand the three main macronutrients that a human has fats proteins and carbohydrates so those three things are the most important things for human growth um, and our survival. So it's the same thing for plants. They have what we call N, P, and K, the nitrogen, the phosphorus, and then the potassium. So that's the N, P, K in uh, these bags that you're gonna see here in just a minute. And that's what those numbers mean. So with flowers and plants and vegetables, we're gonna use NPKs, um, and those are the three main macronutrients. And then of course there's other things like um, different micronutrients that are important for the growth of your, your plants, but most of the time that is um, already given to the plant through a good soil, or maybe it might uh, have a, a trace of that in, in the different fertilizer that you're gonna be applying. So if you have really good soil, and again, I'll put a link below. If you wanna subscribe to the channel, uh, you won't miss any of these videos, um, and hit that like button. But I'm gonna uh, put a description in the box below. Spring, and especially in the fall, is when you wanna really uh, work your soil and and put some good nutrients in there so uh, now it's spring already so again it's fine we, we if you don't haven't done that and you've already planted you can still put your fertilizers and actually you should still put fertilizer regardless of how your soil uh, nutrient level is so the main difference with the different fertilizers there's two different essentially two different things you have a granular fertilizer and then you're going to have a water soluble for fertilizer the granular fertilizer is going to break down over time it, it's well let's take a look real quick 
so if you look at the granular fertilizer, okay, the granular fertilizer is exactly what it says. It's granular um, little pellets, if you will. And what that's going to do is that is going to put in the soil and then it'll break down over time. So you usually put a granular fertilizer in uh, at, the, at the beginning of the season. What I do is I'll dig my hole with my seedlings and I'll put a little bit of the granular fertilizer in there and then I'll also put some phosphorus. That's uh, really good for fruiting, but we'll talk about those in just a second. But uh, the granular fertilizer will break down over time and then you're gonna have the water soluble fertilizer that's immediately available to your plants right away so when you want um, that quick and, and uh, easy the the uh, water soluble is going to be the best and that's going to put your i usually do mine every seven, seven to ten days on my uh, my water soluble fertilizer my granular fertilizer what i usually will do with that is i'll put that around my plant and i'll do that every month or so uh, so then that breaks down remember over time so on the, and, and again, you just have your, your schedule and just make sure that you water every seven to 10 days with your water soluble and your granular fertilizer you put there um, uh, every month or so. And you do that for the length of the season and you should have a wonderful, wonderful garden and uh, you'll see all, all kinds of things going. So let's break down a little bit what the NPK is in the fertilizers and what all that means. So any bag of fertilizer is going to have on it uh, the NPK levels. It may have it in the front, it may have it in the back, but it will always give you an idea of what the NPK level is. So again, nitrogen. Nitrogen is specifically for leaf growth. So if you want good lush green growth, you're going to have a lot of nitrogen. Think about nitrogen. Uh, we put a lot of nitrogen on grass um, and, and that's just green grass. Uh, you might do that for leafy lettuce, but your greens that you're going to be doing, uh, you want to have a high nitrogen. But something like my tomatoes or my cucumber plants um, that have uh, fruits or flowers that are developing, if I give them a high nitrogen, the nitrogen that's going to uh, be in the, the a little duck. Um, I guess it's migration time. So the nitrogen is going to be uh, helpful for leafy growth and that's very important. But when you have something like a tomato plant, you don't want a whole lot of leaves and no fruit. You want the fruit. So the phosphorus is the second number and the phosphorus is the one that you want to have a higher uh, number during those peak times when you start to see flowers on your plants and that you want good uh, fruit growth. So at the very beginning, maybe you transplant your tomatoes or your, your, your seedlings, let's just call them, uh, into the garden. You want to give them some uh, high nitrogen. It, it, you could do that. That's fine. Uh, but as you start to see the growth, I see a lot of uh, tomatoes uh, developing flowers, things like that that are in, in going on in my garden, it, I'm going to put more phosphorus, okay? And then of course the uh, potassium, which is the third number, is more along the lines of the metabolism of the uh, plant and something along the lines that will help with the growth uh, of the root system also uh, in, in your plant. So N, nitrogen, P, phosphorus, K uh, is potassium. When you're in your garden and you want your fruiting plants, you want that high second number, which is a phosphorus. So when we look at these different um, bags, again, uh, this is a water soluble one. Uh, this particular one from the miracle Grow, uh, it's, and, and here's another thing I want you to pay attention to. The marketing on these things, don't even look at the marketing on this because this says uh, tomato plant uh, food. So if, if you look at this and you, you buy this, because it says, oh, it's tomato. I have tomatoes, I wanna to plant tomatoes. So remember what we just talked about. The, the numbers on this one is uh, 18, 18, and 21. So that's actually a nice ratio of, uh, of the different NPK levels. It's not too high in nitrogen. Uh, it's not too high in anything actually, but it does even have a little bit higher uh, of the um, 
the potassium at the end. So 18, 18, 21 on this particular uh, um, water soluble one. Now the granulars, again, the granulars uh, have different numbers, the same thing. This is um, herb and vegetable food. So this will give you an idea. And the NPK level on this particular one is, let's find it. Sometimes they're not hard, they're not easy. Okay, so this is a great one because, and this is probably why I bought it. I bought it for two reasons. The first one is, is it's a very balanced um, fertilizer. So on the uh, NPK, it's three, four, four. So anything really higher than that, you really need. It's just a concentration of how much of that is in the uh, fertilizer. So a 10, 10, 10 is uh, not as strong as a. Uh, uh, 20 20 20 or something along those lines so so it doesn't really matter as much the numbers you want to have a just a, a low number um, but even especially right now and uh, when you're in your garden and things are growing just keep the keep the numbers even or again you could put a little bit of uh, the, the second number the uh, phosphorus in there that helps with the uh, flowers so this is a uh, 344 this is why I use this the other reason why I bought bought this particular one bought this on sale at the end of the season and uh, if you look in your big box stores you can always get a discount you just have to ask if you see something like this where the bag was opened or it has you know a tear in it or something you just take it up to the register and just ask them hey uh, this was you know damaged can I have a discount usually they'll give you about a 10% discount um, now this is another one that's kind of interesting so this I bought again on sale, on clearance at the end of the season. And this is particularly for what? Citrus, right? So this is citrus tone and this is for citrus and avocados. Um, so you would think, well, what do I need this for? Because, you know, I don't have an avocado tree or I don't have citrus. But again, this is a granular and the NPK on this is 526. So it's it's a fairly even, the, the, the nitrogen is a little higher uh, but again, 526 is not bad and this is you, you could use this for anything. It doesn't just specifically have to be for uh, your citrus. So look at the numbers. Don't look at the packaging and what it says. Just look at something, find something that's new, uh, neutral. Uh, a, a 555, a 888, 101010, or again, if the numbers are a little off, don't worry about that so much. Now, the other secret that I use in my garden is bone meal. So that's what I'll be using uh, right now in my garden. Um, this particular bone meal is exactly what it sounds like. It's crushed up uh, bones. And so of course there's some micronutrients which are uh, calcium from the bones and those kinds of things. But again, this particular um, uh, bot or bag has 217 and zero. So it's got very little uh, nitrogen, but it has a lot of phosphorus. So what is phosphorus good for? Remember, it's good for our plant um, flowering and fruiting. So you're gonna take this. Now you can, you can take this if you want, and you could make it a water soluble if you want it. You could take this uh, based on the directions that it tells you. You can put that in water, dissolve it, and put it on your, your, your plants if you want it a little bit more immediately um, available. But what I usually just do is I just take a tablespoon or half a tablespoon, plant, uh, put that around my plant, and I'll show you what I do with that uh, here uh, in just a second. But just basically you, you put it around the plant and that's pretty much it. So this is essentially what I do is I remove the, the mulch, just kind of move that around. This is my um, Hungarian paprika pepper. And uh, I'll take like one, again, more or less, one tablespoon of my granular fertilizer. And I'll just take that and I'll sprinkle that around. And then I'll take maybe a teaspoon of my bone meal. And I'll just take that and sprinkle that around my plant. And then all I just do is just with your fingers, just kind of rub that into the soil and then you put your mulch back on top and you're all set. I'll be posting more videos like this. So if you have some things that are going on in your garden, uh, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to know how your garden is growing and what you're growing this year. Until next time.
Happy gardening. So I'm sitting here in my garden. Take a look. I just love the hummingbird.